Hey Twisters, so for this video, we're gonna talk about 10 breakout centers for the 2023-24 NHL season. So with this video, you're gonna learn about some players you might not be as familiar with as they've only played in the NHL for a season or a couple of seasons. And especially if you play fantasy hockey, this will help you learn some names that might you might wanna consider drafting later in your draft if you need to fill a void at center. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Who is a breakout center that you're looking forward to most in this upcoming season? And I'm defining a breakout center for the most part as someone who's not a rookie and has already played in the NHL a little bit and is at the age of 25 or younger. I only have, I think, one exception here. And if you want me to produce additional videos like this for wingers, for defensemen, and maybe even for goaltenders, please do leave a thumbs up. I did produce this last year, so there were some players on my list last year who did excel quite a bit. We're talking about Tim Stutzla, Barrett Hayton was definitely a pleasant surprise. Dylan Cousins went from 38 points to 68 points, in, including 31 goals. Anyway, let's start with our first center, and it's got to be Mason McTavish. He finished toward the top in voting for the Calder. I think he was fourth overall. He was third in rookie scoring, 17 goals and 26 assists for 43 points for the Anaheim Ducks. He also added seven goals and seven assists on the power play. One reason why I do like McTavish for this upcoming season is because Alex Kalorn was added from the Tampa Bay Lightning in the offseason. And even though he's in his early 30s, he still contributes quite a bit. He had 27 goals this past season, so he could help either McTavish or Zegris. And of course, we've already seen what McTavish can do at high levels of competition. We think back to what he did at the World Juniors just a couple years ago, playing with Connor Bedard there. So certainly a former third overall draft pick is due for a good season, even though it's not for a very good team. You're going to see that most of these players are on teams that aren't competing for a playoff spot necessarily, so they're going to get more opportunity. But our second player is actually on a competing team right now, and that is Wyatt Johnston of the Dallas Stars. A strong rookie season for him last year. He was fourth among rookies in scoring, so just behind McTavish. 24 goals, 17 assists for 41 points, and was fifth in Calder Trophy voting. And certainly the Stars are going to be competitive again next year. I like the addition of Matt Duchesne. So we'll see if we could possibly get a second line consisting of him and Wyatt Johnston. So I think this is a good opportunity for Johnston to build on the year that he had last season. All right, third, we're talking about Kirby Doc for the Montreal Canadiens. Now, Kirby Doc was in the middle of a breakout season last year. He only played 58 games, though, because injuries held him back there. But he had 14 goals and 24 assists for 38 points. So kind of like I did with Jack Hughes last year, I said a full season would be a total breakthrough for him. And it was maybe to a lesser extent. It could certainly be for Kirby Doc. He had a career high in shot percentage as well at 13.1%. The Canadians did take a step forward last season. Injuries were certainly a factor as to why they tailed off. Doc was certainly a part of that. But St. Louis might have something special brewing there, even though it's going to be a really competitive division. But I think all that opportunity is there for Doc. If anything, his wings aren't exactly the best out there. I am curious to see what happens with Uri Slavkovsky, assuming he doesn't play up there with Caulfield and Suzuki. But even so, I think Doc has already started, uh, has gotten off to a promising start there with the Canadiens, and I'm curious also to see what Alex Newhook's uh, role is with this organization. He was actually on my list last year. The fourth center I want to talk about is Gabe Velarde for the Winnipeg Jets. Now, he had a bit of a breakout last year with the Kings in 63 games, 23 goals, and 18 assists. He comes over in that trade for Dubois, and joining him is Alex Iafalo, and certainly there's a good chance that they'll play together. And of course, with Dubois leaving, that opens up a spot at center in the top six. I was thinking about Cole Perfetti here, but so far he's only played at the wing, so I'm going to consider him just a winger. But for Velarde, this is a great chance to build on what he did last year and maybe even see his role increase with this team. The fifth center I'll talk about is Shane Pinto for the Ottawa Senators. Now, Pinto had a strong rookie campaign or first full season at 20 goals and 15 assists. He also added five goals and four assists on the power play. And especially if you play fantasy hockey and you do get points for faceoffs, he's actually one of the better young centermen with that role in the NHL. He won 52% of his draws. That's definitely something you don't see for very many young centers out there. So I did want to note that certainly. And when we look at the wings, I know that they lost to Brinkett, right? And I don't expect Pinto to be playing the second line center now that Josh Norris is back. 
he would be somebody on this list, but he's already kind of had his breakthrough season a couple years ago. But uh, Ridley Gregg is somebody who I'm intrigued to watch out there. He only played 20 games this past season for the Senators, but there's a lot of hype around him. Or you could see somebody like Dominic Kubalik on the third line as well. He was pretty productive for the Red Wings this past season. And yeah, there's an opportunity here to also serve some time on the power play in this upcoming season for Ottawa. Center number six on our list, I've got Peyton Krebs for the Buffalo Sabres. I do find it a bit surprising that Krebs had just nine goals and 17 assists in 74 games this past year, but the Sabres collectively, one, they can just score in bunches with any of their four lines for the most part. They were third in the NHL in goals this past year, and that has to do with all the talent they also have at the wing, in addition to, of course, their top two centers. So you could see somebody like Victor Olofsson on a line with Peyton Krebs. He had 28 goals last year. You could maybe see a young up-and-coming winger in the likes of J.J. Paterka. So there's lots of flexibility with how the Sabres want to design their lines in the middle six, I think. So he's certainly somebody I'm excited to watch out there. Coming behind, of course, Tage Thompson and Dylan Cousins. And he was the 17th overall pick in 2019 for a reason. So maybe this is the year we finally see that on full display. Not to mention the Sabres could actually be competing for a playoff spot this next season. And I'm certainly looking forward to that. All right, next up, we're at our seventh center, and I've picked Jack McBain for the Arizona Coyotes. The Coyotes are a team that I expect to be significantly better this upcoming season. Uh, they had a good season under Andre Tournier, just compared to what you actually saw on paper with that roster, and I think it's going to get better. They ha they actually spent more money in the offseason, but at the same time, their center depth isn't exactly the best. So I think that creates more opportunities for McBain to maybe be as high as their third or who knows, maybe even their second line center while we wait for a talent like Logan Cooley or Connor Geeky in the years ahead. Now, McBain this past season, 12 goals and 14 assists for 26 points. But look at how he finished the end of the season. His last 23 games, he scored 15 of his 26 points and was averaging more time on ice. And check this out, especially if your fan fantasy league keeps track of hits. He led the NHL in hits among forwards. So he only finished behind... Check this out. Luke Shen, Rad Kogudis, and Nick Delorier when it comes to hits. So he's kind of a wrecking ball out there. I'm excited to watch him, and hopefully the Coyotes are able to uh, take another step forward with that group. Now for eighth on my list, I looked at the Philadelphia Flyers, and certainly Morgan Frost did have kind of a breakout year last year with nine go 19 goals excuse me, and 27 assists. But there's another guy here who I saw as high as second on the depth chart, and he seems to have been a good organizational uh, fit so far, and that's Noah Cates. And you have to consider that Kevin Hayes left in that trade to the Blues, so that spot could be his for the taking. He's actually more of a defensive-minded player. You look at you know his J Fresh card, his card for the Athletic, the defensive metrics look very promising for him. He actually finished 15th in Selkie Trophy voting. And last season, he was able to contribute 13 goals and 25 assists. He got a little bit of power play time at three goals and five assists. And with the Flyers, they don't have elite wingers out there necessarily. But assuming that maybe Farabee can take a step forward, he got to play the full season last year. And Cam Atkinson, he'll be returning from injury and hopefully can be some sort of contributor there. We'll get to spots nine and 10 in just a moment here, but I wanted to mention some other players that I haven't talked about just yet. Now, Matty Beneers, I, I do like him quite a bit. I like his all around skill set, but he did have 57 points last year, and I don't know exactly how many more he's gonna have next year. I don't think it's gonna be much more than, I don't know, maybe about 10 points. Considering the, the Kraken can attack with four lines, that's how they played last year. Then there are those hybrid players. They play center, they also play wing. But guys like Quentin Byfield, who I do expect a monster season from, if I make a video for wingers, he'll probably be at the top of my list. Cole Perfetti is one of them, and Kent Johnson for the Blue Jackets. Those guys are mostly playing wing, so that's why they're not on this list. I thought about Anton Lundell, but given that you have Barkov and Bennett, I don't know how much more opportunity he's going to get. And they're not quite as good at the wing going into the season as they have been in previous years. Although, of course, Lundell's defensive skill set is one of the better ones that you would see on a list of players like this. Philip Heedle, I kind of think of the same thing too. He made some progress last year offensively. I think he had 45 points. But again, you've got Zabanajad and you've got uh, Trocek and you probably have to lift 
you know, somebody like Lafreniere or Kako into the top six as well. So I don't know if he's going to outdo his performance by that much more. Marco Rossi is still a rookie, so I can't exactly have him on this list. I like both McLeods as well too. Ryan McLeod and Michael McLeod. I really like how he performed in the playoffs specifically, but given that they're on competing teams, I don't know exactly, you know, how much opportunity they'll have out there. And there might be some other players I missed. So again, comment down below. But for the last two centers, I'm actually looking at the same team. It's kind of fun to at least introduce one team like that. And that's the Predators. Now, of course, they lost Duchesne and they lost Johansson in the offseason. In comes Ryan O'Reilly. So he's probably going to play that 1C. But really, the next two spots, I think that those players are going to have a chance to really make some good improvements on what they did last year. The first one I'll mention here is Thomas Novak, who he is 26 years old, but last year was just his first year in the NHL, his first somewhat full season. So he played in 51 games. He had 17 goals and 26 assists, including five goals and seven assists on the power play. I think that he's probably the best bet right now to be the second line center. And the other guy that I want to call out here is Cody Glass. Uh, former first round pick from the, uh, 2017 with the Golden Knights, sixth overall. And this past season, again, his first pretty much full year, he played in 17, or excuse me, 72 games, 14 goals, and 21 assists, nearly 58% in the faceoff circle. So, again, that's really good for a guy who's only 24 years old. He added six goals and three assists on the power play. And some of those other players like Parsonen, and you've got Evangelista, and you've got. Uh, I, mean, I know Trennan's kind of one of the younger players too, but the, the Predators do have a couple young forwards who did help that team nearly get to the playoffs this past season, even when their whole top line was out injured. So I think at least one of those players is due to really build on what they did last season. Anyway, guys, what do you think of my list? Who did I snub? Let me know in the comments down below. And again, leave a thumbs up if you want me to produce more videos like this, whether you're playing fantasy hockey or you just want to learn about some other players to watch out for in this upcoming season. All right. I appreciate you twisters so much for watching. I'm Nick and I'll catch and I'll catch you later. Ciao for now.